It's the nation's favourite antiques experts. Yeah, I've got it, I've got it. Behind the wheel of a classic car. <gasps> and a goal to scar Britain for antiques. Oh. The aim, to make the biggest profit at auction. But it's no mean feat. Doubled up there. There'll be worthy winners. £1,700. Yay! And valiant losers. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> Will it be the high road to glory? Loving it, loving it, loving it. Or the slow road to disaster. <laughs> this is the Antiques Road Trip. <laughs> Who writes this stuff? The sun is shining and we're on Britain's back roads once more with dynamic duo <laughs> Irita Marriott and James Braxton. This is a perfect skinny dipping weather. Oh, it is, isn't it? We should be frolicking around in the sea. <laughs> is that our plan for tonight, then? I don't know if my hairy legs are really should be shown in public. Don't you worry, James. You can leave your hat on. It's the fifth leg of their trip and they're dashing through Devonshire. That is fruity, isn't it? Oh, look, there's a chicken farm there. Uh, the chicken can make a fruity smell. Oh, that is ripe. <laughs> Last time, it was a battle of the elements, James' favoured metal. So copper and brass. While Arita backed porcelain. So excited. And it was the sweet smell of success for her at the auction. At £320. I'm sizzling. <laughs> <laughs> So it's anyone's game now as the 1968 Volvo carries them towards their last outing. This trip, for me, hasn't really been about the money. I have very much enjoyed the company. The money has just come along for the ride. Yeah, it just, just sticks, doesn't it? Yeah. <laughs> it's quite nice when it sticks. <laughs> they both started out with a £200 stake. And after four trips to the sale room, James has swelled his to a respectable £524, 10 pence. But after that last auction, Irita has taken the lead and now has £667 in her piggy. It's not over yet. But sometimes it's time for old dinosaurs to lop off, find the cave and go to sleep, isn't it? Hey, hey, you're going nowhere, Mr Braxton. <laughs> yeah. He's not extinct yet. On this trip, the dinosaur and the damsel started out in Kent before hugging the coast all the way through East Sussex, Hampshire and down to Devon, en route to a final showdown. But before that, there's still some shopping to do and our first stop of the day is Heel and the Antiques Village. Look at this. This looks amazing. Really good, isn't it? Located on a four-acre former cider factory, eight miles east of Exeter, it's a vintage, retro and salvage destination. There's so much to choose from, it's enough to put you in a spin. Watch out. Look at that. I like shiny things. I'm a real romantic at heart, and seeing something like this makes me simply smile. It is technically a postcard from Silver that says, Will you marry me? What a way to propose. And look on the other side. It says, my heart is yours. And it even has a ruby in the heart. That is the cutest thing I have ever seen. It is hallmarked. It looks divine. It feels divine. But at £600, it's a bit too pricey. If I was not already married, I would love to have received one of these as a proposal. Then again, what about a 10-year anniversary? Could I get away with that? That would actually be tin, Irita. <laughs> What's James up to? I love elephants. They're just lovely, aren't they? They're so gentle, so huge, but so gentle. And we've got a pair of pottery ones here. Very well worn, these. They're probably oriental. I think they're probably Chinese in manufacture. They could have either been seats although my bottom wouldn't fit on that. Um, or maybe stands, you could have had pot plants on there, couldn't you? Price tag, what have they got on it? 1,795. Now that's slightly above my budget, so as much as I love them, I'll have to leave them. The elephant's in the room, eh? <laughs> now, where's Irita? That has a lot of style to it. It's an oak cabinet that could be either a tabletop or it could be hanging on a wall as a medicine cabinet or a spice cabinet. 
But the bit that I love about it is the art and crafts, a little bit of Art Nouveau influenced detailing. It is just to die for. I mean, look at these hinges. They are just beautiful. Now, if you open it up and see the glass towards the light, you can actually see that it is emerald green. It is so pretty. And it has that wobbly, bobbly kind of effect because it's been handmade. It's not mass produced. And that is what Art and Crafts was all about. It's having the individuality to pieces. I would have that in my house, wouldn't you? Now, is this gonna be the problem? Because usually these things don't come cheap. 125 pounds. Well, if you're a lover of art and crafts, it's not a lot of money. One to put aside for later then. It's a great rocking horse, isn't it? And then this, we've got a circular table, the late 19th century. It's got lots of work. We've got body twist legs here, then we've got sort of bobbin, cotton reel, turn legs uniting with a platform there we've got a lovely circular top here with a molded uh, edge to it and then this is uh, sort of shallow carved and then we got this rather nice uh, border of stylized flowers around here wonder what price they've got on it <laughs> 295 now if i could buy that between 100 and 150 i might have a chance you'll be lucky Best call over dealer Jason. Jason. Hello. Now, I've found a classic bit of oak here. Would £100 buy it? 150 would be the limit. I'll give you 150 No problem. I'll give you 150 That's brilliant. Jason. Thank you. I'll leave it here. A generous discount, I'd say. Thank you, Archie. That's you, lovely. Jason. That's no really worries. kind of you. I'm I sure you do well with it. Guide it through. Careful. That leaves James £374.10. Meanwhile, Irita's still shopping. I can spot something gold a mile away, tell you that. And I spotted that from across the room, and I am so glad I did. The quality of this is exquisite. The plate is Vienna porcelain. You can tell it's the real deal by the beehive mark on the back. I spotted the price. 25 pounds. It's a bargain! Oh, what I've not realised, the little dolphin-like creatures around, they're actually enamelled and raised. So are the birds, and this is all jewelled. I just got to buy this. I'd be crazy not to. Time to track down Clive, the proprietor. Clive! <gasps> Rita, what have you found? Well, this is one of the things that I found in your amazing shop. This is priced at 25 and I'm going to pay you the whole £25. That's lovely, thank you. And the other thing, there is an uh, Art Nouveau Art and Crafts little cabinet, tabletop oh, one. yes, I know the one, delightful little thing, yes. Yeah, yes, the hinges, oh, to die for. Um, that is one two five. Special for you, £80. So I'm going to take the plate to 25 and I'm going to take the cabinet at 80 that's wonderful. So that's £105 105, for £105, yeah. Here we go. There is your money. Brilliant. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. That was nicely done. And I read it's still got £562 to spend. Eight miles away, James has arrived in Exeter. In a quiet churchyard on the outskirts of the city, White headstones mark the graves of fallen heroes. Long forgotten, they once defended the skies in this country's darkest hour. James is meeting local historian Michael Parrott to learn more. I want to share with you a, a real unknown story, really, about Exeter and its links with a Polish squadron that was here during the Second World War. And my interest was drawn by this plaque that I found in 2012, actually in the chapel of the actual cemetery here. And although it's in Polish, on the second line, you can see clearly the number 307. I can see that, yeah. 
So I then started to research a little bit more about 307. So Polish airmen evacuated Poland in September 1940 after first Germany had invaded and then Russia had invaded from the east. And these Polish pilots are ordered to flee Poland in order to continue fighting. And at which point there is really only one place for them to go, and of course that's Great Britain. And the Polish airmen even described Great Britain at that time as the island of last hope. Despite being welcomed by the RAF, at first the experienced Polish pilots were grounded, with their tactics and flying seen as cavalier by the British. But then, in September 1940, the Battle of Britain commenced and the Polish took to the skies to fight. The most successful Allied squadron during that battle was the Polish 303 squadron, despite being in the, in the battle for the shortest period of any of the Allied really? squadrons involved. They had something to prove. Yes, and as a result of their success uh, during the battle, more Polish squadrons are formed, and one of them was 307 squadron. 307 were a night fighter squadron, and they were the only Polish night fighter squadron in Great Britain during the war. Dubbed the Eagle Owls, the 307 Squadron defended a huge swathe of southwest England, Wales, and the Channel. And in 1942, in what many consider their finest hour, they were called to the air to defend Exeter. James and Michael have come to the city's cathedral, which was targeted by the Luftwaffe. The Germans decide to bomb Exeter. And this was as a result of the RAF bombing the German city of Lübeck. Hitler was so enraged that he used a German travel book, the Baedeker Guide, to select five beautiful <laughs> British cities really? to bomb as revenge. And Exeter was one of those five cities chosen. Now, on the night of the 3rd of May, 40 Junkers 88 German bombers are attacking the city of Exeter. Now, Exeter's only defence that night was the Polish 307 Squadron. The 307 Squadron only have four bow fighters to defend the city of Exeter against 40 German bombers. That must have been terrifying for them. Absolutely. Over the next hour and a quarter, the four lone Polish fighters managed to shoot down an equal number of German bombers. The raids destroyed many ancient buildings in the city centre, along with nearly 1,200 houses and the loss of 1,064 lives. However, without the 307's bravery, there would have been nothing to stop the German bombers from completely destroying the city. Here in Exeter Cathedral, one of the biggest buildings in Exeter, the cathedral was only hit by one bomb. And this is exactly where that one bomb fell. And if you look here, this is a piece of shrapnel from that bomb. You are so lucky it didn't hit the main nave. Absolutely. It? Had yeah. it been, then almost certainly Exeter Cathedral would have been destroyed together with all the other buildings that were destroyed that night. Thanks to Michael's efforts rediscovering the story of the 307 Squadron, the sacrifices they once made for Exeter will never be forgotten. A new tradition has been created to honour these valiant pilots every year. On the 15th of November, the city raises a Polish flag in salute to the men who defended their skies, ensuring their memory will never fade again. Back in the Volvo, Irita's got the sunroof open and is en route to her next destination, the historic estuary port of Topsham. Going to the beach, beach, beach. We're going to the... Whoa, whoa. <laughs> She's heading to the Key Antique Centre, a riverside warehouse with 65 dealers trading over 9,000 square feet on three floors. Daphne is keeping shop today. Now, let's see what Irita can find for her remaining £562. Oh, aren't these lovely? Now, things with dogs always do well in auction because there are so many collectors in that area. And these are pretty spectacular. I mean, you see French Art Deco bookends all over the place, with deers, with birds, with dogs, with all sorts. 
What I like about these is the size. They are bigger than what they usually tend to be. The color of the alabasa is just beautiful. It has that natural green, mossy, brown kind of tint to it. And I really like that. So it looks as if these are made out of cold painted spelter. Poor man's bronze, basically. So they are not the top quality. However, they look pretty top to me. At 55 pounds for the pair, these will be coming to auction with me. Still just as useful as the day they were made. Now, what else can you sniff out? Oh, then. I feel like I'm moving into Braxton's territory today. Let's have a good look at it. Oh, the, the carving is really pretty. So it is Chinese hardwood carved table. It's carved with plum blossom, one of the most celebrated flowers in Chinese art, frequently depicted as a symbol of winter and the herald of spring. It represents new beginnings and hope. I would have said it's dating from around 1900s, but there's one knack about these. Even the specialists, they can't quite tell the age. But when they are hand-carved rather than mass-produced, they can fetch really, really good money. And this does not look like something that came out of a factory to me. No. That can't be right. It's 38 pounds. Right. I'm going to go and get Daphne and see what deal I can do on the two bits that I like. <gasps> Braxton territory, here I come. The student becomes the master. James would be proud. Daphne. Hello there. Hello. I just got two things that I quite fancy. OK. Uh, one was the bookends, the Art Deco ones with the dogs. Oh, yes, I know. Um, they were £55. And there's also a Chinese hardwood carved occasional I little table. One, yeah. And that's priced at 38 Yeah. So that's, what, nine, 93 altogether? 93. Now, what could those possibly be, please? I can do the bookends for 50 OK. And the table was 38 Yes. I can do that for 34 so that would be... 84. 84. 84. I am definitely having those. I'll pop the money there and I'll go grab them. Thank you. We'll Thank see you later. That leaves Irita with £478 to go on with. And after all that hard work, I think she deserves a little treat. Oh, look at that. Mm. I'm glad James isn't here. I don't have to share. <laughs> well, you do have to share the car, so you'd better go and pick him up. Now, what would be your ideal dinner tonight? Pasties. Pasties? Pasties. Pasties? That is so posh. Country, West Country accent, pasties. 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 <laughs> Enjoy your dinner, chaps. Nighty-night. Rise and shine, our dalliance through Devon continues. Last day shopping, James. I know, mixed emotions. Yeah. I'm, one moment sad, this is going to be our last day together, but two, what a fabulous day to have for a last day. It's the perfect weather to go antiquing. Yesterday, just the one item for James, a 1920s carved table. I'll give you 150. Leaving him 374 pounds, 10 pennies for today's shopping. Meanwhile, Irita's bought four items. An Art Nouveau cabinet, a Chinese carved table, a pair of Le Courtier bookends, and a Vienna porcelain plate. It's a bargain! Leaving her with £478. I would not want to be you going up these hills because... Ah, you are not going to make this here! Oh, there we go! Yeah. Oh, dear. Once back up and running, though, James has dropped Irita off and made his way to St Mary Church, a charming village by the sea. Penny Lane is his next stop, where owner Mark will be hoping James has come to spend the pounds. I've been here before. It's full to the brim. Anything tickle your fancy?
nice spoons, aren't they? This is a, a replica of an anointing spoon. You know, this, the anointing spoon that would reside in somewhere like Westminster Abbey, um, probably the Tower of London, and would have made kings and queens. So this is, in fact, in silver. It's a good weight. It's a good shape. Made by Elkington and Company, a great maker. And then we've got another spoon here. Uh, Again, a model of a much earlier spoon. And again, a similar date, just turn of the century, London maker here, Walker and Hall. I quite like these. I'm gonna pop them in my pocket and I'll catch up with Mark later. Make sure you don't just wander off with them, James. <laughs> now, what else can you rustle up? So we've got a little silver-coloured um, box, it's generally for snuff. This turn of the 19th century, so it's early 1800s. You've got a rather nice stone in there. It's brown in colour, almost tiger stone, agate, something like that. And then we've got this rather nice inscription here, the friend of freedom. I need to go and see Mark. No ticket price on that one, all the spoons. Let's see what Mark will do. Mark, I found some nice items. I found the spoons and a snuff box. Could I give you sort of uh, 50 for that one and sort of 80 for that? I think I probably was thinking initially on the snuff box, maybe somewhere in the region of 140-ish and the spoons I was hoping to see 80 to 100 for, so. Okay, what about 160? Okay, well, if I was thinking one uh, for the uh, for the snuff box and 80 for the spoons would take me to 180, I'll meet you in the difference. 170, would that suit you? Yeah, of course it will. Super. 170, that's Super. really Super, thank you, James, much I'll appreciated. I'll leave the money very neatly there for you. No problem, thank you. After those two purchases, James is left with £204, 10 pence. I'm really excited about this box I've just bought. The Friend of Freedom, engraved around a brown insect stone. And that's the clue. This is an abolitionist box. This was made in 1806. And in 1807, Parliament passed the Slave Trade Act, abolishing the international slave trade. The engraving could refer to 19th century politician and abolitionist John Batchelor a former mayor of Cardiff, his campaigning against slavery earned him the epithet, friend of freedom carved on the plinth below his statue. This is a great thing about antiques. They're often not only tokens, but um, items that mark important changes in social and international history. I'm really pleased with that, very excited. You know, I'm holding history in my hands. Not often that James gets that excited. So this is definitely one to watch at auction. Irita has made her way to Paynton, a seaside resort on the Devon coast. She's getting an exclusive look at a piece of British cinematic history. Behind the hoardings of this building site is the Paynton Picture House. Paul Hawthorne, chair of the Picture House Trust, will take her behind the scenes of the efforts to resurrect this forgotten building. Welcome to the Paint and Picture House. If you'd like to follow me, I can introduce you to our wonderful building. I'll lead the way. In the early 20th century, film lovers would watch moving pictures at fairgrounds, or so-called penny gaffs, in the back of shops. However, the highly flammable nitrate film used in the reels led to a number of fatal fires. So, in 1909, the government passed the Cinematograph Act, which introduced fire precautions and resulted in a wave of picture houses popping up all over the country. The Paynton Picture House opened its doors in 1914 and is reputed to be one of the world's oldest surviving cinemas, built before the word cinema even existed. What is the history of this building? There were thousands of cinemas built at the same time as this cinema, but only a handful survive. And, and, and what we have here, the picture house has three or four things that make it particularly stand out in terms of being very, very special and unique. So the scale of the building, how vast the auditorium is. We've got the, almost the only surviving private boxes as part of the cinema on the first floor there. You've got this beautiful picture stained glass window at the front, which is, and then as well, the, the quality of the woodwork, so the, the carpentry, the, the carving of the staircase and the beautiful front entrance door. 
they made it a standout building with the quality of the design, the quality of the work inside, and the simple scale of it. They, they had this passion for ventilation. It's one of the first air-conditioned cinemas, so you had a big fan on the roof, a fan underneath the building, and you had a, what they described as a sea of fresh air constantly circulating in here, so it was known as the coolest place in Paynton. The cinema remained open and popular for decades. In its heyday, it was frequented by the rich and famous, most notably Agatha Christie, who featured the cinema in her writing. In 1991, it was declared a Grade II listed building. However, the opening of a new modern multiplex cinema in the late 90s led to the Picture House closing its doors for a final time over 20 years ago. It makes me feel like I'm in a time capsule. Yeah, very much so. I mean, in a way, when it shut in 99, you know, they shut the doors and that was it. And, and it, everything stayed unchanged. And now, gradually, we're carefully peeling back the layers and bringing, breathing life back into the building. The cinema was neglected for years. The roof opened to the elements. The facade crumbled. The feature stained glass cracked and decayed. But in 2016, a hardy band of volunteers purchased the building with grants from Historic England and Torbay Council and are now determined to return the picture house to its former glory, hoping to one day show films again. What a fantastic window. Yeah, we're very, we're very proud of it. It spreads over two floors here. It's a depiction of a, a, an apple tree. How much do you think it's going to cost in total to restore it to the original beauty? We're looking at about 2.7 million, of which we're about halfway now. So with the future high streets money that the trust has just received, we, we just passed about the halfway mark. So well on our way to, to getting it up and running properly. So it's come along quite a way already, hasn't it? Yes, uh, I think what, what we see at the moment is the, the reaction as, as, the, as we've managed to restore all the front, all the glass, you know, it's, it's, it's creating a head of enthusiasm and, and, and happiness really within the town because it's, the, it's sort of voted the most loved building in Paynton. Uh, and uh, a, a lot of people met their partners here, you know, coming to see films together. The people are very much emotionally attached to it, so it's making a lot of people happy and it will continue to do that as we go on. I just teared up. <laughs> <laughs> romantic at heart so anything yeah. like that I could I can see how people emotionally would be attached to it and I can completely understand them wanting it coming back to its original glory and being able to come and watch something here again after all those years thanks to the trust the picture house is being given a new lease of life the final credits have yet to roll on this historic building from the silver screen to the silver-tongued James Braxton. <laughs> I've had a very lovely travelling companion, the very glamorous Irita with her flowing red hair, something straight out of a pre raphaelite drama. This charmer's on his way to the town known as the gateway to Dartmoor, Ashburton, his final stop. She slowly, she slowly crept up on on me and then overtaking me in the last auction. So there's one more throw of the dice and let's hope I come up sixes. Hopefully James can hit the jackpot at East Street Antiques. Spread across two floors, it has a good mix of everything. James still has 204 pounds, 10 pence to spend and this is his last chance to buy before auction. <laughs> See, uh, no stranger to a, a wind instrument. Oh, my profit's going to go. Oh. You know what they say about blowing your own trumpet, James? Even if it is a trombone. Now, I've always liked these. These, these mirrored stands. And a stand is a magical item because a stand elevates an object to a higher status. Not only in level, but also it makes it more precious and this is a lovely sand these mirrored stands it's got a notched edge look at the back that smacks of 1920s 30s to me they've got 15 pounds on it i can see a good profit in that but i'm not going to leap in you know i still got a whole shop to look at just around the corner irita has also arrived in ashburton 
She's shopping at In a Nutshell Antiques and Interiors, run by Lydia. Irita still has £478, so price is no object to her here. Ah, oh, that is pretty. This looks like a Chinese embroidery handbag. And it would have had a nice little metal chain, probably, dating from, I would have said, 1910, 1920s. Silk inside. Now, the interior is a little bit worn, but the outside is pretty good. £110. Don't like the look of that. I feel like I need to go and explore and see what else I can find. Right, let me pop that down. Shut the cabinet. And venture on. Back across town, has James found anything else? That's a nice steeple stopper. Tiger. Got a free. Big visual items. These are these German pottery vases. They're rather fun, aren't they? That's a nice barometer. There are over 100 years of service, and it's still correct. The aneroid barometer is actually reading high pressure. Very often, most of them seem to be hovering at 12 o'clock, which is change. It's a good English oak. Uh, we've got this rope twist um, surround. The brass is gilded, and you've got a mercury thermometer. It's heavy. It's got some weight here. Now, a Braxton weight test. It's shapely as well. No ticket price, so time to talk to dealer Clive. Clive? Yeah, hi, James. How are you doing? Yeah, very good. I found yeah. two items. Good. I've got this barometer here. Yeah. Uh, and this rather nice display stand. That's 15, I'll give you 15 quid Thank for you. it. But I couldn't find a, a price tag on this. How much okay, is it? I think the death on that would be probably 40 pounds. How I'll, does that sound? Yeah, that's all right. Yeah, yeah I'll give good. you 40. Thank, Thank you. you. That's a combined 55 pounds on those two items. And um, with those purchases made, James is all shopped up. Down the road, Irene is still browsing. She's already seen that handbag. What else can she find? Oh, that just has a nice feel to it. I like the look of these. Now, decoy ducks. You might be quite surprised that these are insanely collectible. Believe it or not, but the first decoy ducks that were mentioned in history were up to 2,000 years ago. And basically what they are, they are either carved out of wood or cork, and um, they just float them in body of water to attract other ducks to capture them. This particular duck is 1870s, 1890s maybe. And what I like about this example is that you can still see the original paint. Not much of it, I have to say, but there is there are a few bits that on the sides and on the nose that you can see. And he got glass eyes. And that is a good sign of age. Now, it is priced at £120, and you might call me mad, but I love it. Better see Lydia, then, about paying the bill. <laughs> Hello, Lydia. Hello. What's um, caught your eye? The Chinese bag in the cabinet. OK. That was priced at 110 Now, what could you do on that one? You can have that for £80. OK. And what about the little duck? You know the decoy one? Oh, the duck. I love the duck. That's a good choice. He's lovely. Um, I'll do the same price. You can have him at 80 as well. Tell you what, I'm going to go with my heart. I love the duck. I love the duck and I'm going to buy the duck. Right, let me give you some money. £80. I hope you do well. I think you will. He's lovely. Thank you. See you later. I think she's quacked it. <laughs> and that's all the shopping done for our antiqueurs on this road trip. Are you happy with your buys? I'm really happy with my buys. I think I have a winner. <laughs> Last chance saloon, isn't it? This is the decider. Who is the winner? Who is the loser? Or who is the runner-up? Runner-up. That is so much better. We're all winners, really, aren't we? Time for shut-eye. It's finally here, the concluding auction to our trip. 
James and Irita have been hither and yon all across the south of England, and today they're parking up in Uthcombe to watch their items go under the hammer. Bridwell Park is a Grade 1 listed Georgian manor surrounded by gorgeous countryside. Now that's a house with a view or what? It's a lovely house, isn't it? Fantastic! Oh. Their items have travelled north to Litchfield and auctioneers Richard Winterton. Irita spent £269 on five lots. And there's the man himself. Anything to keep an eye on, Richard? And sold. £35. This Victorian decoy duck. Now, they're really sought after these days. This is a lovely example and expecting some interest. James spent £375 on his five lots. Over to you, Richard. I really love the George III snuff box. It's engraved. It's a lovely carved stone on the top. A lot of interest on this item. I think this will do really well. With bidders online and on the phone, it's time to get underway. I can't get over the fact that we've had such a great time. It has been a lovely time. A great I know, time. and we've bought so many beautiful things, yeah. and it all comes down to this. Well, well so, it's in the lap of the gods now, isn't it? It is. It really is. Irita's first. Can her Vienna plate dish up a profit? Straight in with the sale room at £40 I'm bid. Thank you, Jane. I've got yours at 40 £40. Well done. Well done. Oh, That's good. Tiny bit more. £45. £50, thank you. £60 I'm bid. Very good. Very good. £80 I'm bid. £90 I'm bid. £100. £110. One hundred and ten. One hundred and twenty. Well done. <laughs> All done. Hammers up. One hundred and twenty pounds. We don't call her the porcelain queen for nothing. Now, you know, the dance. <laughs> 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 James's cheapest purchase, the mirror table top stand. Five pounds I have. That's Surely five. not. Six pounds. Whoa! Should we do celebrate wish, now? I do wish I could have bought six it for £6. Six pounds we have. Do we have seven out there? Hammers up, then. It looks like we're all done. At the six pounds. Disappointing, but it's early days yet. There's no justice to it. At all. Six pounds. Well, there we are. Hey-ho. Like hey you ho. say, let's not dwell. Pyrita's Art Nouveau cabinet next. Nothing really with me on this one. We will start then at the five pounds. Five pounds. That is insult. Ten pounds. Insult. Fifteen pounds. Twenty pounds. That hurts. Twenty-five pounds. Thirty pounds. Thirty-five pounds. <laughs> 35 pounds. At thirty-five pounds, I'm bid. All done and sold. Thirty-five pounds. Oh, this auction's tight. That's disappointing. A little. A little, cos I thought it was the real deal. Can James's barometer get him off the mark? £10, thank you very much. £15. £15. £20. Oh, it's slowly. Uh, Go £25. on. £25. Chuck away. £30. Uh, £30. I'm coming down your side, Jane, at £30, I'm bid. At £30, hammers up then. You're finished. All done. £30. Only a small loss. It's all still to play for. Oh, I think that barometer Rita. didn't work. It, it should have said stormy. Now, time to see a man about a dog. Irita's bookends are up. £15 straight in. £20. £25. £30. £5. £40. Oh, we're getting £40 there. £40. That's good. And £40. Little more. £45. £50. Oh, we've That's made good. it. All finished and sold. £50. All square with that one. It's neck and neck. A stick to porcelain, OK? You did a very good profit with that Vienna plate. Now, James will need these silver spoons to shine. £20 I bid, 25 30 30 bid, 5 Work for 40, it. Work for 5, it. 50, 50. 50. Oh, here we go. 60 70 with me now. Oh! £70. £70. Pound. Internet, both screens are out. £70. Hammers up. All done. We are sold. £70. Even Stevens. Still not much between them. Broke even. Well, it's better than a loss, James. It certainly is better than a loss, isn't it? Can Irata pull ahead with her Chinese table? 
bit of interest coming in. Five and a bit. Ten, I bid. Five? Ten, I bid. Ten pound a bid. Ten. Ten pound a bid. Twenty pound. Thirty pound. Forty pound. Forty pound. Fifty pound. I've done it. Pound a bid. Sixty pound. Well done. Bid. Well done. Eight. Well done. At the sixty pounds. Sixty pounds. I'm bid. You're all gone now. Now time is up. Anyone else coming? All done and sold. Sixty pounds. At Rita's opening up a slender lead. Hammers down. Hammers down. Well done. Well, can't Another complain. profit. I know. Great profit. Well done. James's £150 table next. We'll start at £10. 10? 10? £15. Pounds. £20. £25. Pounds. £35. £40. Pounds. £45. £45. All done. No! Finished at £45. Cool, that hurt. But it's not over. His snuff box is still to come. I never dwell on mistakes. I just move on. So, next lot. It's all duck, no dinner. Irita's final item is up. We'll start it at £30. Pounds. £30, pounds, right. I'm fit. £30. Pounds, it might 30 be interest, pounds, clearly pounds. not enough. £45, £50. Pounds. £50, pounds, £60, pounds, £70. Pounds. £80, pounds, £90. Pounds. £90? Pounds. I'm in profit! Pounds, well done. 100, 100. 100. 100. Pounds, I'm at 100. At 100 pounds, hammer is up then. Here it is. Up and going. Sold then. 100. Quack, quack. A nice profit there. Are you going to buy a decoy duck now? I'm, I'm just going to scar every antique shop in the land. <laughs> the first question I'm going to ask is do you have any decoy ducks? <laughs> James's final roll of the dice now. We are starting off at 70 pounds. 70? Oh, come Eight, on. 90. No, keep going, 10, keep going. 20, 30, 40, oh, 50, flyer. 70, well done. 170. 170. Make no mistake, all done. Hammers up, all done. 170 pounds. A great profit, but is it enough? I think you need to take me for a spin for the one I last will, time. Will, what do you reckon? We'll go for a cup of tea. We're in the county. Clotted cream, isn't it? Yes, please. Do you like a scone? Yes! Gone. Who doesn't? Despite some excellent purchases, James made a loss today. He started this leg with £524.10, and after paying commission, he finishes this trip with £412.32. A very impressive total. But the day belongs to Irita. She began with £667, and after showroom fees, ends the trip with £697.30, making her this trip's champion, with all those profits going to children in need. Bravo! Till next time, James. Till next time. It's been a battle royale of a road trip <laughs> with two worthy competitors. The hunter is ready. Oh. The old war horse. Just steady yourself. And the young Ooh. gunslinger. Spare teeth, anyone? They searched the highest heights. What a view. And plumbed the lowest depths. I hope this paraffin lasts. I better keep it safe. <sighs> but only one emerged triumphant. Ah! Oh, bring what? it on. Bon voyage, mes amis. <laughs>